In a lot of my latest videos, I see comments like, I'm scared of nodes, I left the video when I saw the nodes, and seeing those nodes scare me. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to actually start using nodes and how to practice with nodes and get better at using them so that you can create some amazing stuff in Fusion. So let's get started. Okay, first, we actually need to get our Fusion composition in. So when we got our Fusion composition in, light jump into Fusion. So now that we are in Fusion, we see this media out node. What's this? This is just the output node. If we get our background in and just connect it to our media out and change the color, as you can see, it's outputting blue here. And if we go on our edit page throughout the whole Fusion composition, it's actually outputting that blue color. Let's go back to Fusion. We have added this background node. This is basically a new layer node. And if we leave the alpha at one, it will have color. So this new layer will just have color. And if we get alpha all the way down to zero, this new layer won't have any color. It's easier to show you like this. If we connect a new background, merge it over, as you can see now, it is black. And if we bring alpha all the way down, it actually again comes blue because our first layer had this blue color to it. So let's go to our background and increase our alpha all the way. So now we have this new layer with the black color. If we actually want to do, we can just get our alpha all the way down. And now it's just an empty layer and we can merge stuff to it. So let's get our engine and just merge it over. And now we have merged our PNG on an empty layer above so we can go to our merge and just size it down and you as you can see now we have this png on an empty layer and if we just raise our alpha we can actually still add a color to our layer below our png just to make it simpler to you guys if you are just learning nodes. It's basically layers, but just it's visually different. It's layering top of stuff one on top of the other. As you can see here, we have this, but I can layer new background. Let's merge it over to here. And we have a new background layered over everything here. So let's make it something like this red and just make our alpha to half. And as you can see, it's merged over and it's a red. So it's not really hard to the grasp because you may just be scared of how it actually looks but fundamentally it is the same those are just the layers but here we have vertical layers and then horizontal layers that's what may be putting you off but if it's easier for you guys to work like that you can actually make this all vertical layers so let's disconnect it from here just double click on it we have our media out let's get our background and just connect it to our media out. Now it is vertical. Okay, we have this here with the background and the merge. Let's get our background here. Let's get our merge here. This side, now let's get our media in here. And then we can just merge this over. And now it's vertically merging over one another. Let's get this up like this. Then we can actually just get our merge here and connect it. You can hold shift and just hover with your mouse over uh, the line and just connect it over like this. And then we merge thing over. And again, we have the same thing. Let's get this down and let's get this here, a little bit closer and this here. And now it is connecting vertically and it's just layering stuff one on top of the other. Everything that you add after will just layer on top of the stuff that you have added previously. Let's add our text node here. Okay, we have our text node and let's just type in Fusion is hard like this. Let's increase our size, something like this. And let's change our text color to black. Okay, and then just merge it over. And here it is over everything. So it's over the red color. It's over our PNG. It's over our original background. Okay, let's add some landscape to it. It's very easy. Just get our media in and then merge it over. Now we have our landscape. Let's go to our merge and size it down. 
it's over everything because we merged it last. But in the merge node, that's where things get interesting. This is something like a null node if you have used After Effects. It's an empty node that controls everything that is connected to it. As you can see here, we can actually add, merge a lot of backgrounds on it. Let's go merge one more. Okay. So let's get this background color white. And on this, we will go with something like green. Okay. Now we can go to our merge and just move and scale down. And you can use these controls actually too. And let's go to this one. Let's just get to, get this side and size it down. And we can put right here. As you can see, this here, everything is connected to this merge. And we can control everything through this merge. If we get it down, everything that is connected to this merge is transforming based on what we do in the merge. And scale it up, scale it down. As you can see in our merge, we have apply modes that we can change. If you want to be screen, dissolve, darken, multiply, whatever you want, you can make some amazing effects with this to make things even easier. So that if you want everything here that's connected to this merge, so all this stuff, if you want it to be under the stuff that's merged, merged previously in our pipeline, you can go to a merge and just click on your operator under. So now it's under everything that we merged previously. So it's under this background, under this merge, under this merge, under this merge. So it's under everything. That's why we can't see it right now. So let's get it to over. We have in, we have held out that we don't see anything. We have a top just over everything again, top X your join mask there there are just so much stuff that you can do with this so let's go back over so as you can see it's not really that hard if you just change a bit of a perspective on it you can also consider this one group this is the other group this third this is the fourth if it makes it easier for you so everything under one merge is like one big group that you can control through your merge you can also control everything if you want if you don't want to use your merge to control it you can just type in transform and add in a transform so basically because all of this is connected before the transform we can control everything through the transform same way as we would control with our merge but the fun thing is that if we change let's say aspect and our size a bit and change our angle then we can actually also change everything in our merge as well. So just rem remember that everything that you add after the other nodes will have an effect on the stuff that you have added previously, just like the layers. So is, these are the basics that I wanted to show you. So let's delete everything here. Again, we have our background, we can switch it back up because I'm more comfortable with working with it horizontally than vertically, but you can do it whatever way you find it easier. So let's show you a bit of, uh, let's add this back again and let's just merge it over. Okay, now that we merged it over, let's go to our merge and we can just scale it down to somewhere around here. Let's say that we only want to see upper part of this fellow's body. We can do that with masks. This here are the masks. So let's say let's add a mask to him. Let's connect our rectangle to our act mask. Uh, the blue triangle right here is actually a place where you connect your mask. The yellow one is a background and the green one is the foreground. So everything that is connected to the yellow is considered a background and everything that's connected to green it's considered foreground. So it's above the background and the blue ones are for the mask. Let's connect our rectangle to our media one. Now we have something like this. 
as you can see, our subject is masked out. Let's bring this down a little bit. Now, as you can see, our subject is masked out, but it only masked out the center of his body. So let's click on our rectangle mask and we are here. We can actually adjust our width and height of our mask, however we please. And we have our centers, so we can mask out half of him. Other half, let's get our width all the way and then do something like this. And as you can see, we have managed to mask out the lower part of his body. But now it's like this hard cutoff. We can actually adjust our soft edge somewhere around here. Now it looks like he's fading out. These are just basics of masking. It doesn't have to be a rectangle mask. You can put an ellipse mask on him. And now we have this teeny tiny ellipse mask. We can actually just pick it up and make it bigger or we please somewhere around here. And then we can mask out only upper part of his body. And the good thing is now that it's connected to everything, if we are to do anything in our merge, move it up, down, scale it to whatever we want to do, the mask will scale alongside our merge because this merge, as I already said, connects everything that is connected above it or below for that matter. If you want to, you can just go like this and connect below your merge. It's really up to you to how you want to work with nodes. So let's get it back here. Okay, let's get our merge. Let's scale it down somewhere around here, I would say. It's okay. You can change your masks however you please. We can also add a polygon mask. In the polygon mask, you actually draw what you want to mask out, as you can see here, and then we can adjust. So if you want to fine tune your masking process, you actually do it like this. Here you have a lot of settings that you can choose, but let's say that you don't want an upper part of his body, you can just click on invert and the mask is actually inverted. Now everything in the mask you won't see and everything outside of the mask you will see. Again we have a soft edge so it just looks like it is faded in. So now let's just make a basic composition that you can really easily follow. So let's get rid of all of this here. We have our background here. Let's go to our media pool. We have some landscape. Then we have roads and then we have our subject. So let's rename our nodes by clicking on it and then press F2. So this is land, this is road and this is subject. Okay, let's connect our land over. Now we have our land. Let's scale it down. Just somewhere around here it is nice. Let's connect our road then. We have our road right here. Let's put it somewhere around here. Let's scale it down to somewhere around here. So we can somewhere around here, as you can see. Then what we can actually do is get our polygon mask and connect it to our road like this. And then just go over this line right here and go all the way down and then connect it. And what we can do now is add more points to it. So add a point here and add a point here and then just you just click it and it adds a point. Drag on our previous points somewhere around here. We can actually go right here and add another point and just drag it out and we can actually get it here. So now we have something like this. This was just a quick masking process. Of course, in your project, you are going to be more careful and line everything up. So let's connect our subject. Here he is. Let's scale him down and he can stay right here. So now we have a basic scene. We have something like this. So he's just standing on a crossroad. Now what we can do actually is let's add a transform, transform to him. And then we can actually make some keyframes. Let's go to frame 30 and keyframe our center, go back to 
frame zero, keyframe it again, and then just on our frame zero, we can make him go under here. So when we play it now, he will just come up the road right there. We can go to our transform and then to our spline, select everything, click zoom to fit, click here to select all, and then just press S to smooth it out. And then he comes in a lot smoother. So now we have just have a basic composition and basic animation in. Okay. And everything is connected separately to our pipeline here. As you can see, everything is merged over separately. But actually, it doesn't have to be that way. You can merge everything over to one pipeline. Here is the land. It's the first element in our composition. We can actually take this merge and select everything and then press shift and just drag it out. Then we can just connect our merge here. You just hold shift and hover with your mouse over the line and merge it over. Then just merge our road again to our merge here. But now that we have done that, where is our road? Well, our road is down below. As you can see, here is our road. And why is that? Because it was connected to this merge and this merge uh, controls now everything that is connected to here. So when our size went down, so did the size, size of this road. So let's bring it up. As you can see, now have it here. Let's just increase the size and get it right here. And we are back where we were. We can actually do the same with our subject. Just connect the merge over again and connect this to our merge. Again, our subject got smaller because this merge here controls the size. So let's again go to our merge and just get him up to right here. And now when the animation finishes, he will be right here. So we can actually increase our size a bit and adjust this somewhere around here. And then again, when we hit play, the same thing will happen again but now it's a lot more choppy because it has to calculate all these merges into the one merge below so this all here is just one big group of the layers that make our composition so it's just layering we have first our land then we have layered our road on top of it and then we have layered our subject on top of it and just make made like small animation to it and then everything is merged over to one null object that is merged over the main pipeline that goes to media out which is rendering it out so now if we go to our edit page and we let this render out in our viewer we can see that we have everything outputted to our edit page the whole animation that we did and our, our composition let's go back to fusion so now that we are in our fusion composition, let's say we want to add drop shadow to our subject here. We would actually go to our subject and put, put this all up and just type in drop shadow. And now our subject has drop shadow and you can change your drop angle, shadow strength, drop distance. Let's say we want to do the same thing for our road. Let's just get this out of the way. Let's go to our road and then just type in drop shadow again. Now our road has drop shadow and then you just climb on to more complex things. But you should always start with the basics. Just learn the basics, how everything works, uh, what are the masks, uh, how everything connects to, to each other. Because the order of things really does matter in, in nodes. So this here was just basic composition and just some basic animations. Just this really a beginner stuff. And the easiest way to learn how to edit with nodes, it's just to go with the easy stuff, start with the basics and then progress to more and more stuff and just experiment with it. And always just think of them as layers. So this is the first layer. This is the second layer. This is the third layer and all of this is a group that is layered on top of our background. If we disconnect this here 
as you can see we are left only with our background that we started with even though this merge is still here it doesn't do anything because nothing is connected to it and we connect when we connect it to it it again outputs the things that we have made so this was just the most basic explanation that i could have given you on how to start learning nodes in fusion